Testament. If you'll locate the book of Proverbs toward the end, Proverbs chapter 27. To be honest, the, the week was slipping by and I didn't have any reading about what to teach today for this men's study. Uh, sometimes I'll know a week in advance, you know, sometimes a few days, but I'm starting to get a little nervous. Like, okay, I need something here. And I, I don't know, um, maybe, maybe this will mean something to you or maybe not. But I've been doing this long enough now that I can produce a lesson um, almost on my own. You know, I can come up with a thought. I can develop it and, you know, come up with an outline. But I've learned that that's not the goal to just develop something that will fill the time. I want to teach what God wants me to teach. And so I didn't really have anything from the Lord yet. And then I, I began to think about the men's conference. So just a reminder, next Saturday, there'll be no men's study here. We'll be leaving Friday. Those who are going to the men's conference. We're leaving Friday at three o'clock and we'll get to Mansfield. And then uh, we'll be there about 24 hours and we'll be back uh, Saturday afternoon, but no study here. But I was just thinking some and praying about that conference. And uh, the theme this year actually comes from this verse. And it was like the Lord just impressed on my heart. Study the verse out a little bit in, in preparation for what's to come next week. So that, that's where this thought came from, the inspiration for the lesson today. We're just going to look at one verse. Typically, we would look at a number of verses uh, in a section, uh, possibly in an entire chapter. But we're not going to do that today. So this may be a little shorter. We'll see how it goes. But what I'd like to do is locate Proverbs 27 in verse 17. And let's go ahead and read. Let's read this verse together as well. Let's do reference, verse reference. And then on the handout, we have four questions we'd like to answer together. And I, I welcome your input as we answer these questions. But let's read the verse first. Okay, help me out. Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpened iron, so an man sharpened the confidence of his friend. Proverbs 27, 17. Okay, so let's talk about this verse. Now, before we answer the questions here, we're doing a study on Wednesday nights through the book of Proverbs in my adult class. And we're in chapter three at this point. I know some of you are involved in other ministries on Wednesday nights, so you're not able to be there, but we'd love to have you join us for that study. But we've learned that there's three types of Proverbs. So there's contrastive Proverbs. Often uh, those are noted by the conjunction, but right in the middle of those Proverbs. There's completive Proverbs. Often those are noted by the word and. The second part or second member is preceded by the conjunction and. And then there's comparative Proverbs. And those are often marked by than, the word than, but in this case, the word, word so. So it's comparative. So we're comparing a couple of things. We're comparing a real life example of something that occurs with a very important spiritual truth about friendship. Now the word uh, friend there at the end of verse 17 uh, can refer to a companion, but it can also refer to a brother, a, a friend, a husband, <laughs> wife, neighbor. So it's it's really a broad um, application of that word friend there. So this could be applied to the marriage relationship. Uh, this could be applied to uh, maybe a relationship with a, a fellow uh, student or a coworker or a neighbor. There's a pretty broad application for that word friend. Uh, but today I want us to answer some questions related to this specific problem. And the, the Proverbs are so rich, you know, there's there's not a lot of books that you can take just one sentence and spend a whole study on that, that one sentence, but uh, we're going to do that today. So the first question I want to ask is, why do you think Solomon, of course, he was the human penman that the Holy Spirit inspired to write these words. Why did he choose iron to illustrate this truth? We'll talk more about the truth in a moment, but... Why do you choose? There's a lot of metals that he could have chosen, but why do you think he chose iron? <clears throat> those that know more than me uh, about uh, metals and those types of things, maybe you could help us. It's more durable. 
Okay, there's it, durability to it. It okay. is the working Okay. Right, it is the working right. that. Yep. Steel. Okay, good. Tool steel. Okay. Anybody else want to add add to that? Iron? Well, it's used in combat. Okay. I mean, yeah. In those days, more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. But how it looks Iron sharpness, iron. I did a, a study in, um, I'm trying to think of it. I don't think I have time to do what I want to do, but let, let me just give you an overview. I'm going to have us look up a bunch of verses, but I don't want to get too off track. But if you would just, if you would plug in the word iron into the search criteria search bar, you find that the word iron is used a lot in scripture. And many of those instances and, and references, it refers to a sharp instrument. So it was the metal of choice when they were creating or crafting any type of sharp instrument in scripture. One of the qualities of iron is very malleable. So it's, it's able to be hammered or pressed uh, into a specific shape, and it, it holds that shape without breaking or cracking. And it was easily influenced or pliable. Here's just here's some of the references. Numbers 35, 16. I'll just go through these quickly, but there it speaks of instruments of iron. Deuteronomy 27, 5. Uh, we learn of tools that were made of iron. Joshua 6, 19, there are vessels of iron. This is interesting. First Samuel 17, 7, only test your knowledge. Who in that passage had a very large sphere that the tip was made of iron. First Samuel 17. Was it Goliath? Yes, Goliath, <laughs> good. Goliath, uh, the spearhead that uh, was on his spear was made of iron. Uh, Second Samuel 12, 13, there were iron arrows and iron axes. In First Kings 22, 11, there was a prophet that made some horns of iron. Uh, this is interesting. First Chronicles 22, 3, David made nails of iron. What, what was the purpose? He was preparing for what future uh, building project? The temple. Okay, he was not going to build it, but Solomon would build it. And so he made nails of iron for the temple. Uh, Job 19.24 speaks of engraving with an iron pen. Job 20.24 speaks of an iron weapon. Job 40.18, bars of iron. Job 41.7 speaks of barbed iron. And I, I looked that up a little bit uh, deeper. It speaks of a dart or even a harpoon. And then Daniel 7.7 7, uh, speaks of a beast. Uh, remember that vision of the four beasts and the teeth were of iron. So lots of references and lots of different iron uh, instruments and tools and the sharp objects in scripture were often made of iron because it was, it was easily influenced, it was pliable, and uh, you could shape it into something uh, pretty quickly. Now when they would do this, they would use other tools to sharpen, so often it was iron sharpening iron as they would make whatever the implement was. So that was well known, and, and I think um, if we lived in the, that time period, we would understand this probably even better because of uh, the, the wide use of iron. Now, let's move from that into what's the main message of this problem? Okay, there's comparison. Iron sharpened iron. They, they could picture this. This was a, a mental picture they would have. Iron sharpens iron. So a man, okay, we're going to bring this common everyday occurrence into now relationship. <laughs> So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. What is the main message of this small but very important problem? Well, my home pastor used another analogy. I don't know if it was going over this verse or not, but um, and this might be a little rough, I guess. But some people are to a, are like sandpaper to us, mm -hmm. and they they act rough towards us but smooth us out to look like to to transform help us transform mm -hmm. that's a really good point yeah when the when the two metals are being rubbed together there's that friction mm -hmm. and it's abrasive and some sometimes maybe it's not something we yeah. enjoy but it is something that we need it's necessary for us in order to be sharpened that's a really good point yeah yeah 
That's really good. We don't sharpen ourselves off of nature as men. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't sharpen ourselves off of you know, other other objects. It takes people yeah. to give us that feedback yeah. that we need to be able to improve. Right. That, that's kind of how I view it. Yeah. And iron is a tough, a tougher metal. You couldn't sharpen it with brass. Mm -hmm. Right. You couldn't sharpen it with gold. Those are too yeah. soft. So it needed mm -hmm. something of, of similar durability to be able to. Get it exactly. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that, Brian. That's in. There's so much there. There. You may go into nature for rest, you know, reflection, but that's not going to sharpen you like this is saying. You know, we, we need we need downtime, but that's that's not the application of this passage. If you want to be sharp for God and be on point, not be dull, then you've got to get around other people. We need each other. What, what else? How, how can we explain the main message of this proverb? What is Solomon trying to teach his son and teach us? Anybody else? I think a good friend as a way of refining us, um, rubbing out the rough edges. Mm -hmm. and like I mean, you got the other good yeah. of iron, so a good friend can help us. Yeah. Knock off the rough edges if you put on the right road. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and there has to be a level of trust, uh, openness, and honesty to embrace and accept that sharpening because, it, again, it, it is abrasive and sometimes doesn't feel good. But praise God for a friend, faith for the wounds of a friend. That's another problem that somebody is willing to, to sharpen us because they love us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think of accountability basically brings out mm -hmm. the best in us. Is our walk with Christ. I mean, yeah, personally. Mm -hmm. I think it's a better person that they'll try to bring the best out of it. So they're, they're best, they're, they're interested in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Jim, too. That what we're doing right now, we're sharpening each other, but the greatest sharpening happens between you and the person that should be your best friend, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need that sharpening time with him every morning or whenever you have your, your devotional time, that sharpening time. And, and he, as the greatest friend and companion, is going to sharpen you like nobody else can. So don't skip the sharpening time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the word of God. So sword, that's right, sharp. Somebody else. I think of the analogy between the metal and um, the ability of, of a person to sharpen it. Gold cannot sharpen iron. Mm -hmm. Silver can't sharpen iron. Glass can't sharpen a diamond. Mm -hmm. you know, so you can only be sharpened by somebody who, you know, has the capability of sharpening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you need to. Associate yourself, not totally, but you need to have some of the people in your life who are harder, mm -hmm. you know, more mm -hmm. durable, stronger than you, to be able to sharpen you. Mm -hmm. And yes. your analogy of Jesus, yeah, you know, he's the he's the diamond, yeah, and we might be the clay, yeah, yeah. You know. And I, I went from there, Steve, thinking of David. I, I David is my favorite Bible character. And there were times as he looked at uh, Joab and Abishai um, and some of the other mighty men around him, and, and he said, you're too hard for me. You're, you know, I think that was the actual word he used, you're too hard, you know, because they're, should we just go over and cut this guy's head off? Or, you know, they were just sometimes a little much in their approach. But David recognized the value of putting these men around him. Saul, on the other hand, uh, the previous king, he didn't want those people around him. He was intimidated. Um, sorry, he was threatened, and so he removed those people. But we, we need, and David recognized, that even though sometimes it's a little much, I need these guys around me. And that's why David's kingdom blossomed and prospered <clears throat> because he had some some of those iron men around him. Yeah, that's good. Any, anybody else? There? I think a good Christian wife. In your way, yeah, be, uh, that's that's true. <laughs> you know, we're human, we uh, 
we get dull pretty easy. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. you know and, yeah. and so my wife, I, I, I just, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that word friend there can can also be translated lover, you know, so there's an application for marriage. This is not just man to man, that our spouse is one of the greatest agents of sharpening our lives. You know, praise the Lord for that. Any, anybody else have a thought on the meaning of this? We still have ground to cover, but I think it's, it's good. Andrew, yep. I only thought of this first from the perspective of the one being sharpened. Okay, yeah. if they're going to sharpen, yeah. you take it. Yeah. Like the way that it's written, mm -hmm. the noun verb, mm -hmm. and it's saying, a man, you got to be in this position to do it. You need to sharpen your friend. Mm -hmm. Another man, you need, you need to be the one to sharpen it. There's a whole host of things you got to be able to do, do that. But um, sharpen it is that word sword. Yeah. That's how it was when I looked it up. It, that was when it was used. The only other time it was used other than a sword was fierce. Mm -hmm. And I had to ask, what is countenance? You know, mm -hmm. and, yeah, you sharpen the person, but more specifically, their countenance. Do so. Yeah. Faith, yeah. presence. Mm -hmm. So we need to be alert. Mm -hmm. um, looking at our friends, and sometimes it's, I know my friends can hide it. Yeah. And so we as men need to be alert to watch each other. Yeah. And if something seems dull, like you're not know, serious or or sharp, we can be the one that is in the of the time. So good. Yeah, so good. You know, when I think of this, I think, uh, I'm glad you asked before, uh, you know, the verses that say two are better than one. Mm -hmm. I always think sure. if you got another person, they also have your back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, yeah, two are better than one. That's a great way to sum it up, isn't it? Yeah. When we get alone, we get weird. <clears throat> You know, just watch one of those Alaska shows if you want to come through for that. <laughs> 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 we're going to be with new people. Yeah, for sure. There's been I, a lot I, of I just have to say this. <laughs> when you brought up TV, uh, I was listening to a, a pastor. He was saying, what, what are you you're saying? If you devoted half of your time to what you do through social media, TV, and that, and cut it out, devoted it to your life, I think it's time to go time. Mm -hmm. That was my album. No, I don't think that. But it is. Yeah. We spent half of our time. We took somebody who went social media, TV, and said, okay, I'll just cut out half of that and put it into. It doesn't I sharpen know. you. Right. It, it doesn't sharpen you, yeah. all those things. It doesn't sharpen yeah, so you. So you took yeah. half of the time. You know, that we devoted to the Bible. So I guess that. Yeah. Here's a couple uh, <clears throat> just commentary. Uh, some summaries of this. Uh, this is from Matthew Poole. Iron cutting tools are made bright and sharp and fit for use by rubbing them against the file or some other iron. So a man who being alone is sad and dull and unactive by the company and conversation of his friend is greatly refreshed. His very wits are sharpened and his spirit revived. And he's both fitted for and provoked to action. Another commentator, Barnes, said, This proverb expresses the gain of mutual counsel as found in clear, well-defined thoughts. Two minds thus acting on each other become more acute. Benson, another one, said, A man sharpening his friend means he quickens his ingenuity, enlivens his affections, strengthens his judgment, excites him to virtuous and useful actions, and makes him in all respects a better man. I, I was thinking about my dad a little bit as I was studying this proverb. And my dad, um, he was and maybe still is an entrepreneur in, in the sense that he was, he was always dabbling into different things. And for a while, we had a firewood business. I mean, we, we didn't just cut it for ourselves. It was like a major, major ordeal. And uh, we would we would bid on um, a lot of uh, trees and then uh, they'd be marked to go cut the trees down and, you know, log them out and get in the house, cut them up, split them. I mean, it was amazing. We had like a mountain of firewood in our backyard. And then he had uh, a large dump truck and we'd sell it by the cord and I don't know if we made any money off of it, but he taught us how to work hard with it. And I remember dad watching him. He had a steel 
chainsaw. And I remember watching him cut firewood and he was always stopping. I don't know, like, you know, just come on, dad, let's get this done. You know, I'm hungry, let's get this done, get the lunch or whatever. But he religiously would pause and sharpen his saw. And he had his file, you know, and he'd find it, I remember he'd find a smaller log and he'd put the end on it and, you know, get the saw between his knees and he, you know, he'd go this way, rotate it this way, and then, then he'd go the other way and he'd sharpen that. And there were times when he sensed that even his efforts weren't enough. And so he, he'd take the chains off, you know, and take them somewhere and they'd sharpen them and bring them back. But he realized the importance of sharpening, that sharpening time is not wasted time. Uh, you, you may be familiar with this quote. Uh, Lincoln, <laughs> President Lincoln said, if I only had an hour to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first 45 minutes sharpening the ax. <laughs> what a good statement, isn't it? Recognize the importance of being sharp. We lose our edge. Larry talked about that. We get dull. And that's not something to be ashamed of. Why does the ax become dull? Through use, right? So there's nothing to be ashamed of. If you feel dull and you know you feel like you're not on, on, on point like you were, it's probably because... You've been busy, you've been active, you've been teaching, you've been ministering, you've been going and serving. And there's times where we just have to pause. Jesus paused to sharpen his ax. He spent a lot of time in prayer, a lot of time with the Father. And there were multitudes of people that had physical, major physical and spiritual needs, but he would pause. You know, that, that Selah, I'm talking about that name Selah, he would pause and spend time with the Father because he knew I've got to be sharp. This this ministry I'm involved in, I have to be sharp for this. So we need to learn, I think, from Christ and his example. I, I was thinking about other people in Scripture. The pattern of Scripture is to surround yourself with other individuals that can help sharpen you. Moses had Joshua, right? Joshua was his minister. They, they kept each other sharp. David had lots of people, but who was maybe his, his best friend, Jonathan. David had Jonathan. Jonathan came to him several times and strengthened him and sharpened him. Elijah had Elisha, right? They they worked together for a long time, and they kept each other sharp. Um, Paul had lots of people, right? Silas, who else? Barnabas, Timothy, right? He had lots and lots of people that kept him sharp. So it's easy to lose your edge. Now, let me come to this third question here, and Andrew touched on this a little bit, because sometimes we read a proverb and we think, well, why is that word used? And God always has a reason for what he does, and every word of Scripture is carefully chosen by the Holy Spirit, and, and that's why it's important for us as we think about God's word being preserved word for word. Um, he says here that iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpeneth. It, it could just say, so a man sharpeneth his friend. I, I like sometimes, I, I'm not trying to, um, you know, rearrange scripture or change scripture. But when you take a word out, you realize how important that word is. Because it could say, so a man sharpeneth his friend. Still be a powerful verse. But it specifically, God impressed on Solomon's heart to put in these words, the countenance of his friend. So the countenance is the face. Uh, that, that's the face of a person. And the face, the countenance, is a window into the soul of that person. So as Andrew said, it's important for us. It's hard for us to read our own countenance, but we do need to be reading other people's countenances. The Bible says when Cain and Abel offered their sacrifice to God, that Abel's was received because it was a blood sacrifice. Cain's, on the other hand, was rejected because it was not a blood sacrifice. And the Bible says, what about Cain's countenance? What happened to his countenance? It fell because he wasn't happy with the outcome of that sacrifice. And we need to be aware when, when people's countenances fall, it's not just a problem with their face. It's something deeper. And a wise companion, a wise friend will go to that person and say, hey, I notice, some, some, is everything okay? Something doesn't seem to be right. How can I help you? 
and, and we should we should be very aware of the countenances of other people. And so the sharpening will not only not only does it sharpen our soul, but it, it sharpens our countenance because the countenance and the soul are connected. <clears throat> um, yesterday, I mentioned I spent some time with Eric, and we uh, we ended up at Cranberry Place over here visiting Ian Gooker, one of our members that um, is in a in a situation where she can't really care for herself and her family can't care for her. So she's in an assisted uh, place there. But we went in, I could tell just looking at her that she was having a tough day. And she said, it's just it's been a hard day. You know, she gets discouraged, feels alone and isolated. Uh, but after a, maybe an hour visit, she was like a different person. You know, it's, her roommate was giving Eric a time. She said, he took off his mask and she said, Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, we just had a good time with them visiting and encouraging them. And it was like we left our countenance was different because there had been some sharpening that happened. And I think about in this study, you know, we have stuff we could be doing on Saturday morning. We could be sleeping. We could be working and doing lots of things. But we come to this because we know we need the sharpening. That's that's the point and the, the purpose of the men's study. Years ago, I was listening to a preacher, and he was talking about the, the study he had with his men. This is a preacher from California. And he was saying how important it was just that, that time to influence and sharpen each other. And, and God put some seeds in my heart. And I thought, at some point, I'd like to start a study like that. And then going to the men's conference, and then shortly uh, after COVID, you know, if you remember, I was doing a Tuesday morning truth, just a video with with myself. And yeah, you get weird when you're by yourself. <laughs> like, it was like I got it. We got to get connected to people. And and so God transitioned that into this study and said, you know, you need to do a study with just the men. And this is this has become my favorite time of the week. I love this study. I love preparing for it. Um, I love watching God develop and, and uh, watch the study evolve as we're together. I come in with an outline, but it, it goes different places and God directs that. And so it's a real blessing and it, it keeps me sharp and I think it helps all of us. And I appreciate the opportunity. I want to go to the last point, And this is really just summarizing everything we've already said. What are takeaways? If we could just make a few statements or comments before we pray. What are some takeaways from this powerful property? It's a ministry. Okay. The sharpening part. Yeah, it's it's a ministry, isn't it? Yeah, something that needs to be emphasized. Of course. Yeah. Is countenance always used positive? Well, I mean, in that in the sense of pain. Well, um, no, I mean, I mean here I think it is, but yeah. You, use negative you mean somebody somebody's actually instead of sharpening they're actually it's kind of the other way that you're with somebody that's not sharpening you is that yeah, yeah i mean you can have bad influences I, right I, right yep. I, oh yeah yeah i mean it, it, yep. it, it, it's you know, i have people in my life that i would yeah. have writing me down yeah and that's right and yeah I, I didn't really you feel you feel dull after being with that person. Yeah. It's the opposite. Yeah. I think the adjective yeah. around countenance. Yeah. Countenance being your face or your persona. Yeah. Is it a sad persona? Is it a happy persona? Is it you know bright persona? Yeah. I think that that's probably the, the adjective that describe it better. I don't think in itself but it's like a man to yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah. It's the adjective, like you said, yeah. determines how it. When we go forward, I yeah. Just, no, that's that's the that's the other side of it is if you're if you're not around the, the iron person, you're around somebody else, they're they're gonna impact you negatively. So that's yeah, that's the other side of the coin. Big your axe in the rain <laughs> yeah. in the air and yeah. never let it see iron. Yeah. Not used. Yeah, be rusty. Yeah. Right. Sure. So yeah. yeah. And when you need it, you need it. Like, you know, we need to be sharpened and ready. Because in, in the moment, that's, you know, it's too late. It's like, I need to be sharp now for this situation. I need to be ready at one point. So it's always being prepared. Uh, what else? Other takeaways from this? We need people. Yeah, we, we, we need people. We need to be around good people. Yep. Good people. That's right. Not just people, but good people. People love us. People help us, sharpen us. Sometimes challenge us. Sometimes wound us a little bit. That sandpaper, Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, putting our pride aside and you know, 
the offenses. We just got to gotta be above that. Um, I wrote down a few things. Stay soft and pliable like iron. Yeah, it's hard, but it's also pliable. It's, it's easily influenced. Uh, he, somebody mentioned Ecclesiastes. I think it was Jim. And I didn't write this first down, but I read the other day that, see if I can, if I can paraphrase it, that a poor, ser a poor wise servant is better than an old king. I'm really paraphrasing. An old king that can no longer be taught. It's, it's something like that. That you know, when you get old, sometimes you, you get hard, and you know. But a a servant that's that's wise and willing to be taught. But like, let's not let's not ever feel like we've arrived. Be careful you don't lose your edge. Carve out intentional sharpening time, whether that be your personal time with Christ in His Word. Whether that be uh, the worship times, the teaching times here at church, a conference that you may have the opportunity to attend, those times are really important. Uh, and keep an eye on the countenances of others. That is essential. Anything else before we pray? I think along the lines of what Andrew was saying, we need to be aware of our brothers in Christ. Mm -hmm. Watch for the countenances yeah. that are down. Yeah. yeah. And even I, I know certainly been times in my life when I've had people that have come to me and help me, you know, and help talk to my doctor about that. Just yeah. help me not get track. Yeah. You know, I think it's a responsibility of a friend to start to count. Yeah. So yeah. We need to keep our eyes open. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Compassion. Yeah. You yeah. yeah. think God gives us friends that uh, when we're around them, they always dull us. Mm -hmm. uh, who puts us around, around them to try to start in that hand? I think so. I think you have to walk yourself with that, you know, how much of that you can handle. But, um, yeah, there's a, there's two sides of the table saying. There's the sharpening and there's being sharpened. But um, I think the Lord just has to show you that. Because I know for me, I have certain pastor friends that, you know, they they really help me and I'm thankful for them, but also know that maybe I need to be the one to help somebody else, you know. So yeah, I think there's a, a balance there and the Lord has to give you wisdom on uh, on that. So I work for the guy and he's always he's always negative no matter what. Mm -hmm. You walk away and you try to stay away from him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I know. I know. Small small doses, right? You yeah. always walk away feeling he was blessed. I worked with that boss if I had zero integrity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was wrong. Yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. It's more of a machine, a little bit transparent. I don't know if anyone has the same film call this year, but I just want to be over with my family all the time. You know, we may be uh, raising the kids, mm -hmm. uh, being around the wife, especially when she's watching all day. Yeah. And I find that I kind of retreat there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't go out with guys. I don't go to range. I don't do anything. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's zero from from my family. Mm -hmm. But there's the most challenged recently. That you got to do something. Mm -hmm. Like you got to be around guys, and I see that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot different being around guys that I don't know. We're not explaining. It, you know, no, it's, it's good. Guys, you know, guys are different. Challenges. You know, they're iron. I don't get. I don't get sharpened the same way. You know? Yeah. So trying to find that balance, you certainly could. You don't want to be out. You know, guys are out all the time. You know, and that's yeah. wrong. But uh, never being sharp. And that's yeah. I guess they always go look. Well, when you say guys always being out, you know, are those guys right. really going out to get sharpened or right. just to have fun and you know get away? Like, that's what's your purpose for going out? You know, you know, it's like like the men's conference with men's study. I think a spiritual discerning wife will not only let their husband go but encourage their husband to go away you know for this hour or two because yeah. they know he's going to come back better he's going to come back helped so you know they see the value of that mm -hmm. even though they like you to be there they know this is important for you and it helps all of us yeah and you know, my wife and too she's like saturday morning she walking kids over yeah and saturdays are like the time to get some help but she said no yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do it again. I'll watch you get to know go. Yeah. 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 Because they, they'd rather have you gone a little while and come back sharp yeah. than to be there all the time and be dull and, 
you know, yeah, in a bad right. mood and all that, you know, because so, yeah. we can control the atmosphere of the home, you know, by our spirit. Yeah. When your children grow up, we have adults. That would be one of the main things in life. Mm -hmm. My dad was home with us all the time. He ended up with us. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm away from my life, like when we went to Belize, mm -hmm. I still have that feeling. I got all that mother running to my wife. I actually had to turn away. That welcome back kiss was a little bit too much. <laughs> I, I had to look away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find, and I'm in a situation in Philadelphia. I uh, had kindness or whatever. The best, I have two people in our company talking to me about how their spouse is a guy and all the body comes from mm -hmm. It's not a, you know, and I'll sit down with him. And after I sit down with him, 30 minutes, you would think I mean, that I would walk away. I feel badly for my, I know what they're going through. That life that died before. But it actually, in some ways, I feel good that I can be there for them. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain that, mm -hmm. but I have, I mean, every day I have those opportunities. Yeah. Um, sit with another fellow. Mm -hmm. It's going through a lot. I mean, and it, it does two things for me. Um, I feel a lot better. And I know it isn't relative life, but sometimes I walk away. Thank you, God. I'm not going through that. I'm only going through this. And, and, and I know sometimes, but I do. I feel a lot, lot better and healthy. And I'm trying to, but I think part of your kindness is helping other people too. It's not yeah. just getting sharp in yourself. Yeah. yeah, this can become a selfish thing. We're all about how can you help me? You know, that's not really the goal of proper. You will be helped, but as you help other people. Yeah. yeah. Good. I mean, I hate to get caught up on, on the analogies. I think sometimes do that a little too much, but um, you know, iron and iron, they're compatible metals. Mm -hmm. So when some when you know, when I file one of my tenants said, Hey, my the, the door latch of my the women's um, restroom doesn't latch on me, well, you just need to file the mm -hmm. the latch hole a little yeah. bit. And so yeah. Brought yeah. my file in just yeah. yesterday and filed it. Mm -hmm. So two things. One takes a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. It took me mm -hmm. 20 minutes to file, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just a mic on a little mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. And um, it took material obviously off of the latch. Mm -hmm. And it also took material off my file. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The file itself becomes dull. During that process, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, like you said, yeah. when you become dull, it's probably because you've been at work. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and if I took that file to some soft metal, I could make huge, huge gouges. Mm -hmm. and so, you really have to be sharpened by a compatible metal. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of effort, yeah. and you might, you might experience some metal coming off of YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it's a difficult process. I think that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. Sharpening is an mm -hmm. uh, energy-intensive, difficult process, painful process, yeah. you know, potentially for both. Yeah. yeah, I know. Steve also, I've mm -hmm. also, I know it's valuable the last of his time. Mm -hmm. that 20, I didn't need it. You know, mm -hmm. It's time to be sharp. Yeah. Yeah, we want it done right now, don't we? Yeah. 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 You can't come quick yeah. enough, thank you. Yeah. It's it's yeah. 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 Hmm. Wow. That's good. <clears throat> Imagine if we would have tried to cover three or four proverbs. <laughs> <laughs> so much is the let's call them her. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for these moments. Sharpen the time. It will be your word and, and how it, it is a sword that uh, Lord helps us and some, sometimes hurts and cuts, but the Lord knocks off those rough edges. Lord, uh, make us into the men you want us to be. Make us into iron men uh, that are strong, durable, but, but also pliable, easily influenced not by the world, but by you. Shape us, Lord. Remake us. Help us in our spirits and minds. 
or do a do a deep um, change in us. I pray, God, that it would be obvious on our countenance, Lord. We want to be joyful, but that the joy would not be just surface, but there would be a depth to it as you change our very souls and being. We thank you for these men that have greatly influenced me, my closest friends, and grateful for them. And Lord, the, the openness, the honesty that we have, Lord, we're not trying in any way to be critical or discouraged, but Lord, there's a, there's a faithfulness and there's a, a openness that we enjoy uh, in this room. And I, I pray, God, that you would guide us forward. Lord, we, we take a moment and pray for next weekend. I pray for Pastor Kurtz. Pray for Eric Humble, the other assistants there at Mansfield Baptist Temple. Pray for Pastor Skelly and also Brother Polly that will be coming in as the main speakers, as the ones on the panels. Lord, that your spirit would prepare hearts and that it would be a, a wonderful time, a dedicated time of strengthening and sharpening, not just for us, but others there. Or maybe we'll meet somebody there from another church that we can help to sharpen a little bit. And we pray that you bless and give safety, uh, Lord. For the guys that can't go, I pray that you encourage them. Maybe next weekend, they could replace this time with something else, guide them with that. And uh, Lord, we just love you. We're thankful for your truth. We pray a blessed remainder this day and be close and near to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. How many do you have going? We have 11 or 12. Okay.